Kids wearing masks in school. Parents are passionate on both sides of this issue, but there is some concern over whether masks are having an impact on speech development. Speech and linguist pathologist Brooke Dwyer and Bridget Hillsburg joining us now with more on this. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, ladies. Thanks for having us. Brooke, let's start with you. Kids have been wearing masks here in California for pretty much two years while in the classroom. What do we know about the impact masking has had on kids' speech development? So we don't know for sure a whole lot. There is limited research happening, but the preliminary research is showing that there may be a negative impact on children's language development because of wearing the mask. And, and why is that? Is it because the physical cloth or they're not seen or they're not, their mouth isn't being seen? Like what, what are some of the physical issues with that? So as speech and language pathologists, we know that children learn language through both auditory and visual cues. So if you take that visual cue away because you're covering it up with a mask, that is one very important modality of learning language. So, it also can impact the production of sound and how well someone hears and perceives sound. Gotcha. Uh, and we know that the CDC has uh, made some changes because of this. Bridget, can you touch on this? They've pushed back some uh, very important speech milestones. Um, what should we take away from that? Can you explain what the, the CDC has done here recently? Yeah, so the CDC updated their or all developmental milestones for the first time in nearly two decades. And it left many speech and language pathologists and other professionals as well, like physical therapists and occupational therapists, a little bit concerned. The reason why is because they kind of changed the marker from about 50, what 50% 50 of children can do to now what about 75% of children should be able to do. Now this was intended to make it easier for children to be identified for early uh, intervention and we're afraid, unfortunately, by lowering some of those milestones to later ages, that it will actually do quite the opposite. And as advocates of early intervention, we just want to make sure that parents are still proactive and work on helping their child at home meet those, those other milestones. Bridget, did this have anything to do with the impact on masking and the pandemic and everything, the timing of this and this pushback by the CDC? Like Brooke said, it's really, really difficult to know the exact reason. Um, the research that they did use in the study, the CDC uh, used as in this study, was actually conducted prior to the pandemic. So we do know that, um, but the timing makes it difficult to understand. Yeah. Brooke, you've experienced a lot of uh, develop, you know, uh, development-wise, the kids with their speech and everything during the pandemic. What have you been seeing with our kids over the past two years specifically? So both in a little bit of an, in, an influx in late talkers. So these are our little ones that were more than likely born during the pandemic. They're like birth to age three. And because they weren't going to daycare. Um, they were probably home more than they you know, would have been normally. Maybe they were on screens more than they would have. Mm -hmm. Their language is a little bit more delayed. Again, hard to really know what these kids have been identified anyway, or is it due to the pandemic? But we are seeing a little in, um, influx in that. Also, children with articulation issues. So these are more of our preschoolers, school age children who have a hard time with speech sound development. This is really difficult to work on when you're having to wear a mask. So this has been a, a big point of contention during this pandemic. Bridget, what should parents do out there? Um, we're expected at the end of the month to learn from Governor Gavin Newsom what the plan is for the mask mandate. Uh, we haven't been given a specific date as to when that could go away in schools or if it will. Um, the conversation parents should have with their kids right now, if kids should say, look, I'm, I'm tired of wearing the mask. We saw a school district recently that decided to uh, allow people to no longer wear masks because of uh, the students saw the governor not wearing his mask, and that was the catalyst for that decision. So what kind of p discussion should the parents be having with their kids regarding uh, masking and the development of speech? So you really want to take advantage of that 
maskless time at home, whether you have a baby, a toddler, or a school-aged child. It is so important as a parent or caregiver to get face-to-face -face with your child. For our babies and toddlers, you want to talk to them, allow them to look at your face, show items as you talk about them to help add meaning to the words. And then same with our school-aged children, you want to sit down at the table with them if they're doing homework or a game or playtime and allow them to really look at your face and get all of those visual and auditory cues that they may be missing at school. Great advice, Brooke and Bridget. Where can people learn more about the uh, progress that uh, we are making here and any other advice and tips that you guys have to suggest? So you can find us at speechsisters.com and we have a couple of online courses. Uh, also on Instagram, you can find us at Speech Sisters. We never address the sisters, but I think we can tell that you guys are, in, in fact, sisters. So thank you so much, sisters, for coming on our show here. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.